Hello, and welcome back to my channel, Another Headache. I almost forgot the name of my channel. Welcome back to my channel, Another Headache. I am Renee. I'm sorry you have to be here. So this is my first formal video for the channel, apart from the trailer, which I did a couple days ago. And already things are going wrong. Uh, my plan for this video was to give you a really in-depth look at how I black out my house. I, I call it a vampire level blacking out the house. I don't let any light in. Um, I, we've here in the UK, we've had three weeks of beautiful sunshiny weather and Saturday I was going to, uh, film the interior with this really, really bright sun that we've had, uh, to show just how effective my blackout techniques are. And of course, Saturday it was rainy and cloudy all day. We had no sunshine today. It's cloudy all day. We might have a few gaps, and if we do, I'll try and do some videos. So since the weather's not cooperating, I thought I'm going to do my first video on the weather. So let's roll the title and get started. So if you haven't figured it out yet, I'm American by birth, British by choice. I've just about lived half my life here in the UK. And British people are renowned for talking about the weather. In fact, if you want to be, make friends with a British person, there's, there's really just two things you've got to do. Uh, first off is make friends with their dog. Do that and you're in with the family. Second thing is to learn to talk about the weather. Now the English weather, I wouldn't say the English weather is bad weather or very severe. Obviously, we've got bad weather coming through occasionally, but generally, it's pretty mild in England. But what people like to talk about is how inconvenient the weather is. See, the problem in England is that you never have the weather you want. Trudge off to work on a Monday morning, you sit in the office all week, all day, every day for a week, and it's beautiful, beautiful sunshine out. Make plans for the weekend, going to go to the beach, going to have a barbecue, going to do whatever, and it's cloudy and rainy. Come back to Monday, beautiful sunshine. The thing about English weather is that it's rarely the weather you want. It's just the weather you get. Um, so what I thought I would talk about in this video is how weather and changing weather affects headaches, migraines, and cluster headaches. And yes, weather can affect all three of the primary types of headaches. Um, if you're a headache sufferer, especially if you have uh, sinus headaches or hay fever related headaches or just pressure sensitive headaches, the weather can trigger headaches. Migraine sufferer definitely can be triggered by, by weather. It's hard to pin down some time zone. It's hard to identify the weather as the trigger. That, that can be the challenge. And there's been some studies done small groups of people, but again, it is kind of hard to say, this weather event will trigger a migraine. It doesn't quite work like that. It's not that cut and dry. If you're a cluster headache sufferer, pressure definitely can impact or trigger a cluster headache. Uh, I have a friend who lives up in the mountains, and her main town where she lives is down uh, in the valley. So if she's in her cluster headache season when she's having all her headaches, if she goes down to the city to do a bit of shopping, when she comes back home and she goes back up the mountain, so she goes from a higher pressure zone to a lower pressure zone, that will quite often trigger a cluster attack for her. I've also known people who fly um, and, and you're fine on the, on the ground, but you get up in the air and the pressure changes that can trigger a cluster attack. Or you land and you get out of a pressurized airplane into the pressure around you, that can trigger an attack. Scuba divers um, can sometimes have problems if you're a cluster headache sufferer just because of the change in pressure. And I'm pretty sure, it's been a while since I've looked this up. Um, I, I started flying when I was 15. I, I soloed when I was 15 and I was addicted to airplanes as a kid. Um, and one of the things you have to do to fly is to have a medical certificate. But I'm pretty sure, I will look it up before I do an episode on it, but I'm pretty sure that if you have cluster headaches, you can't get a medical certificate to fly uh, because they are so painful, you can't actually operate an airplane while you're having a cluster headache. I will double check that though. 
So what we're going to do is talk about the weather. And what I want to show you is how I visualize the weather in my own head and how I picture how high pressure zones and low pressure zones work and, and how all of that can trigger a headache. So we're going to jump into some graphics here and I'm going to show you how that works. So the way I picture high pressure and low pressure zones working is like this. We're going to start with the sun and the earth, and we're going to put the earth inside an imaginary balloon. We're going to zoom in on the earth. So now we can see the horizon. We can see the clouds and the sun and the balloon sits just above the clouds. It's kind of the stratosphere. And the reason I put a balloon around the planet, an imaginary balloon, is that we're going to pretend that someone is pushing down on the surface of the balloon with their finger. Uh, so they're putting pressure on the balloon. And that pressure is going to extend down into the air below the balloon and push all those clouds away. And when you get a high pressure zone like that, because it's pushed the clouds away, it's going to let all that sunlight through. So high pressure equals nice, bright, sunny days because it's pushed those clouds away. It's pushed those clouds over into the low pressure areas. And all the clouds are now bumping into each other. They're, they're really angry because they have to share their space. Uh, they're going to get upset. They're going to throw lightning bolts and rain and, and just be really nasty. That's low pressure. Low pressure is clouds and rain. High pressure is sunshine. And this is why. You get this pressure coming in, pushes the clouds out to the low pressure area. Now, where this affects headaches, headache, migraine, and cluster headache sufferers, is that if you move from a high pressure zone to a low pressure zone, or more likely, the weather above you moves from nice sunny weather to cloudy rainy weather, that cloudy rainy weather may also bring a headache or a migraine, or it may trigger a cluster headache. Because uh, you're making that shift from high pressure to low pressure. Just like my friend who would travel from the valley to do her shopping and go up the mountain to a lower pressure zone would trigger a cluster headache for her. Same principle. If we take a look at a standard barometer, um, you can see over on the right hand side where the numbers get larger, the, the millibar pressure is, is greater, you get sunshine. And then when the needle swings to the left and the millibar pressures are lower, you get rain. High pressure, sunshine, low pressure, rain, quite often a headache. Just want to quickly say thank you for watching this video and sticking with me this long. I know I've got a lot to learn about talking to a camera. If you found anything useful that I've talked about so far, uh, please say thank you by clicking the like button. That really helps this channel get promoted. If you want to hear more from me and you think I'm going to have some interesting topics, which I know I'm going to do, Click the subscribe and the bell so that you know when more videos come out. My plan is to release a video every single week. If you know somebody else who has a headache, migraine, or cluster headaches, please, I ask that you share and tell them about this channel. So now I want to touch on another subject uh, under this general heading of under pressure. It's not weather related, but it's stress related. It's a different type of pressure. And stress is a well-known trigger for headaches and migraines. Um, you definitely have stress-related headaches. And for me, where migraines have been a part of my life forever, they run in my family. My siblings have them. Uh, my kids have them. My nieces and nephews have them. Migraines are just a part of our family, really. So stress was always one of my triggers. Um, and my first marriage, when we were going through the divorce, really stressful time, really bad migraines through that whole time. Uh, same with my second divorce, really stressful time. But what I found out about stress is that when I started getting cluster headaches in 2007, and this is quite common with cluster headache sufferers, is that when your stress drops and you go into a relaxation mode, that's when you get cluster headache triggers. Um, so I, I know people who will be absolutely fine. They'll take a couple weeks holiday. They'll get to the hotel, drop their bags off, and bam, they get slammed with cluster headaches because their stress has dropped. 
um, for me, it was really kind of interesting because when my cluster headaches were really bad and I would go into the office, I would be really, really anxious about having a cluster attack while I'm at the office. You know, what would I do? It, it's, it's really extreme pain um, and it, it can last for an hour or two hours. And I would always have something planned out. I would you know, go and, and hide out in the toilet or I would you know, go to this private office and, and just kind of deal with the pain. But because I was anxious and stressed about it, I very, very rarely got cluster headaches at the office. And when I did, they were, they were fairly minor. But when I'd be driving home or I would get home that evening, I would get slammed with cluster headaches because my stress levels would drop. Uh, really bad on the weekends, you know, you snuggle in for a Friday night, going to watch a film, get some popcorn, and bam, get slammed with cluster headaches. Um, so for a few years, I ran this balancing act where if I got too stressed out, I would get a migraine. But if my st stress levels dropped too much, I would get a cluster headache. So I was always trying to balance in that. And kind of the way I did it was that... Um, I would not let myself get stressed out about work, just took a different attitude about work and the stresses of, of that type of, or that part of my life. And then when I was home in the evenings and weekends, I would always have a to-do list of things I needed to be doing. Um, I have a whole raft of hobbies. So I'd have hobbies lined up, I'd make candles, i work on different projects. So I'd always have things lined up so that even though I was like going to relax and watch a show, in the back of my mind, I was like, oh, I really should be doing this. Or I really should be doing that. And I found that that little bit of anxiety was just enough to keep me from totally relaxing. Probably not healthy in other regards for, for stress. Probably not great for that. Um, but it kept the cluster headaches at bay. And very similar to the weather, where you go from a high pressure zone to a low pressure zone or the weather changes and you get a headache or a migraine or a cluster attack, uh, stress works the same way. You change that stress level. You go from being okay to being stressful, you get a migraine. You go from being really stressed out to relaxing and chilling out and you might get a cluster headache if you're prone to them. So for me, learning how to manage and balance my stress not getting too stressed, not getting too relaxed, had a huge impact on my headaches. Uh, meditation is something I, I do a lot as well to help kind of manage that, be in the moment. So to sum up very quickly, from my first video is uh, changes in weather can cause headaches, migraine, the cluster headaches. Changes in stress can also do that as well. So it's all about managing those pressures in your life. So thank you again for coming and watching. And please do remember, life is what happens between the pain.